Alright everyone, welcome to Bordighera. It's on the Ligurian Riviera in Italy. You're a walking distance from France. You're about 40 minutes from Monaco, and this little town is stunning. We stayed at the Gold Hotel, which is a phenomenal place, family-run, little boutique place. Um, the love, the care. This guy, Nicola, showed us around and brought us into his family. I, I can't say enough for this kind of experience. This is like what traveling is all about. All right, let's get into it. Our first stop was the Leghetti de Rochetta. Okay, this is where the Alps meet the sea, and there are these mountain rivers that cascade into each other and create these natural swimming holes, which I don't even know what to tell you here. They're like emerald pools of gorgeousness with these little waterfalls. You get silly in it. You can sunbathe in it. You can dive in with your GoPro. Whatever you want to do. All right, they're phenomenal. Freezing, but phenomenal. Our next stop was down in Dolce Aqua, okay? This is a medieval city with, like, a twist, all right? You got the castle up top, you got these windy streets, and these archway passageways that are phenomenal. There's this art, just art happening everywhere. This town is awesome. Uh, they have these Baroque churches. This is the Chiesa San Antonio. Uh, super stunning. And then we found this woodworker that made this, I don't know, it's like a model of the city in like wood. It was awesome. And then they also have these pianos that are just sitting out where if you know how to play piano, like Federica, yeah, you play the piano. Enough of that garbage. Let's talk wine. We're here for the wine, right? We're right next to France. We're in Italy. We're getting the best wine possible. This is the wine of the region, and it is delicious. They also come with these little sweet, savory tarts, and you meet these people on the street, and they're like, hey, try our wine, and yes, I will. I will drink it all day. Our next stop was down into the river, and there's a working farm where you can rent horses. You can also eat these uh, white blackberries, which I've never had before, but they're delicious. And you get to ride these beautiful horses into the great wilderness of the Italian Alps. We found this horse, Mora, um, that was a lovely little specimen. Federica uh, took to her right away and uh, did her hair. And, um, you know, we went for a ride. I don't personally ride because I don't believe that animals should ride animals. Uh, it's just my thing. Also, they tend to do this thing, which you never look good doing unless you know how to ride, and I don't. But let me tell you this. If you're into this business, there's no better place to do it. You got the town in the background, you got this beautiful countryside, and if you're lucky, you get to take a little stroll on the stream. I mean, look at this. It's like Red Dead Redemption, like in life. It's, it's amazing. It was beautiful. And these horses... They're on cruise control. They're like Teslas. Uh, I can't say enough about this this experience. It was phenomenal. Also, you know, she also had the, her daughters come out, and one of the, the okay. horses looked like a unicorn pony. So, uh, you know, extra points. All right, so it's nighttime. It's this nighttime sleepy little city. No, it's jam-packed with kids. I'm talking everywhere. In every bar, there's live music. They're on the streets. They're, they're riding these things. They're jumping on these things. I don't even know what this is. And there's these artisans doing this amazing glass work just on the street in front of your eyes you know you think it's made in china it's not it's made right there and then of course there's restaurants beautiful restaurants with amazing food i mean look at this beautiful aged chianina beef but the most spectacular thing that i ate was here at fratelli mambrino okay this place has been open since 1966 this old guy's been cut melons since then everyone in town comes out to eat watermelon I mean, have you ever seen something this wholesome in your friggin' life? It was unreal. And the watermelon was awesome. I mean, really, really delicious. There's a reason why everyone does this, and it just made my heart leap for joy. All right, so it's the morning. We're in Bordighera, and it's time to do a little exercise because you want to get too fat. So the hotel arranged this with our friend. Fantastic. We also didn't want to sweat too much, so we rented these fantastic bikes through the hotel with Discover Riviera. There are e-bikes, and let me tell you, the technology here is out of this world. These bikes are fantastic. You pedal a bit, it pedals for you. There's no better way to look at the Lungomare. You really get a sense of what this place of the world is about. It's about the ocean, it's about the hills, it's about being out in the sea. It is a stunning, stunning place. You're just riding past these amazing amazing little cafes and restaurants, places to have a little drink, a little eat. I mean, this is a vacation, people. 
This is the way you should vacation. It will leave a smile permanently on your face. But it was time to actually hit the beach. And what's cool is that the hotel's got this deal with this beach club named Corsal. And to me, it's the best one. You got people out playing volleyball. You got the sun chairs. You got these, like, beds you can sleep on or do whatever you want on them. You know, and then, obviously, you have the ocean. And the ocean, the ocean, my friends, is like drinking water. Okay, it's out of like a movie. This looks like Pixar to me, all right? You got this aquamarine, aqua velva look and these beautiful white waves. When you go underneath, you see everything. It's not cloudy. It's it's like crystal water. This place is all about the beach. You have these pristine platinum beaches that are surrounded by mountains uh, that butt against this azure water. I've never seen a place this beautiful in my life. I'm sorry. It's gorgeous. But it works up an appetite. And luckily, corsal has got this amazing little restaurant. I don't even know if you want to call it a restaurant. It's like a place to eat and drink. Phenomenal wines, regional wines, salty and savory, delicious and cold. You can't go wrong. You can drink them all day and you'll never get sick of them. I'm sorry. And then obviously, there's the food. The food is amazing. You should have malone. You can't go wrong. You have the bufalina here. Obviously, you're going to eat that. This is a special dish called pesegu. You're in the heart of the pesto, all right? This is where you want to eat the pasta. Obviously, clams and, and spaghetti because you're on the beach. By this time, it's time to discover the city that is Bordighera, all right? This is an ancient town. We're talking this dates back to 6th century BC, all right? Like most things in Italy. But in its heyday, we're talking medieval times, 12th century. When it really came into fashion, and this is interesting, was in the 1800s. And the reason why is that this guy, Giovanni Ruffini, wrote this cheesy romance novel. I'm sorry if you like it, but like that's what it is. Called Dottore Antonio. And we're talking like Fabio style cover romance novel. 1885. And this book goes nuts in England. Nuts. Everyone goes crazy for Dottore Antonio. And they all flock to this little town where the book is based. And people are really enjoying Bordighera. And there's a really good reason why, because it's stunning. It is this mixture of mountain and sea, of east and west, perfect climate, and you get this influx of culture that this part of Italy has never seen before, which is phenomenal. So you have amazing architecture, you get tennis, which is introduced to Italy in the late 1800s. This is the oldest tennis club uh, that exists in Italy, which is phenomenal. You also get your classic uh, bocce or patank if you're French. So, you know, this was a place of sports, of health, and one other thing, of flowers. This place was well known for its flowers and its fruits because you get the best of the best here and you see it everywhere you go. One other thing they have is this phenomenal library, which is ancient. There's a little bit of artifact in there, but they have a collection of books here that is second to none. You're going to find tomes, yes, tomes, that you can't find anywhere else in the world, which is quite a treat, you know, if you're in Italy. The one thing you do have to see is the Clarence McNell Museum. In 1888, this guy Clarence comes down here. He's a, a botanist, and he goes nuts for this place. And what does he do? He goes all over the world, and he gets these trees, and he brings them back to this weird little town in Italy and grows them. You have the largest fig tree in the world here, all right? And it's located, yes, on the Via Appia, the first road of Rome. This road led exactly to Rome. There's so much history and culture happening here that I can't believe I've never even heard of this place. You will lose your mind when you visit this beautiful museum. All right, fine. But like, let's talk about the city center, the old town, the 12th century, the medieval walled city of Bordighera. What's that all about? Well, let me tell you, it's stunning. As you ascend to the top of the hill, because it's fortified, you wanna be at the top of the place, you find these little tiny streets, walled streets with like beautiful little shops and bicycles and people having cafe and having a little aperitivo. I mean, this is like the picturesque little medieval town you imagine in your head where you can find these amazing things to buy and amazing places to sit and eat and drink 
until the sun sets well into the afternoon. And then let's just talk about the wine and beer selection here. It's out of control. There's no reason why you have to go anywhere else. Once you're there, you plunk down, you have a nice meal, there's seafood, there's pasta, there's everything you could ever want, even dessert, all right? So Bordighera has never been on my radar. I've never heard of it. I like Liguria, I know Cinque Terre, uh, but this little town, which is where the queen, Queen Margarita, actually decided to die, that should tell you something, is a gem. It is kissed by the sea. The people there are warm and friendly, um, and the food, the wine, the environment, the nature, everything there just kind of builds upon itself and crescendos into this experience that is truly different than any other place that I personally have ever visited in Italy or anywhere in the world. And uh, what can I say? Go. Just, just go. <laughs>